Hi Felicity, Felicity here from Felicity Fee's Crop Stitches. Just trying a different setup today to do a stitch with me type of video. I'd also like to do a couple of tags. Um, bear with me, I've already tried this about two or three times trying to use the stand thing that I've bought on my actual uh, Maastricht stand. However, it never seemed to really work. So I've actually tried just using a different um, stand behind me and hopefully it won't be as jerky. I do have some cross stitch questions um, that the, some of the tag questions I want to answer um, and I do have a trusty notebook so let me just get that and I hope not to bump anything because I think I finally got everything in the right position. Alright so um, in my trusty little notebook here it's bright purple or it's like a purpley pink um, I've written all the questions down um, and we'll start from there. So one thing I think I've mentioned before, but I do love pink and purple, so I've written them all the questions down. Um, as you can see, I'm currently working on Elsa by Anna Dittman, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I'm currently working on page 23 um, out of 30, however, I've already completed 24 pages. This is probably progress since, what, Saturday, Sunday? Probably some, mainly Saturday. Um... So today is currently Wednesday. I think it's the 5th of October. I'll double check on that. Um, we were going to be... No, today is the 4th. Tomorrow is the 5th. Today is the 4th of October. Um, we were, as I said before, we are going away um, on Friday over to Maitland, which is in Victoria. However, um, we were supposed to leave on Friday. Um, we did get a call today saying we could get in tomorrow, which is Thursday. So we're leaving tomorrow at six o'clock in the morning. yippee doo doo da Road trip. Um, I'm currently working with colour 452, which is like a dusky rose type of colour. Um, and it's a lot of this colour. I don't know how many skeins of floss I've already gone through this one. Especially this is all this colour here. So we're just filling in, I think these are a couple of snowflakes that are coming up at the moment, um, just underneath her chin. So her chin's mostly done, other than this bit over here. Okay, let's get into the tag. So I'm going to do the original cross stitch tag. And question number one, how did you start or who introduced you to cross stitch? All right, so the person who introduced me to cross stitch um, wasn't really, it was two people um, and they were married. So it was Nana Schiller and Grandad. I did a tribute video to these um, to them last a couple of videos ago showing the cross stitches that they had done for us which are sitting up around our house as well as um, some of the cards. So every year for Christmas um, we get a card that was stitched and I also used to get a birthday card as well. We, as you saw in the video, we still, why is this not going in? Here we go. Um, we still have all those cards um, and they are so special. We're never, I'm never going to get rid of them. Then we also have quite a few um, cross stitches around the house. Um, plenty with, mer uh, not mermaids, plenty with musical instruments. I have a woodland, a fairy in my room. I don't know the names of any, any of them. So, um, I've always been around cross stitch. Uh, there is a cross stitch that my mum did for me in my bedroom as well. It's a sampler type one and it's the only cross stitch that my mum has ever done. She is more into knitting than into cross stitch and um, but she has done a couple of tapestries. So um, as I said I've always been around cross stitch. I've never really known what it was until um, I asked about it about 10 years ago and we're going from there all right question number two do you have a favorite theme or designer um i'm still i find i'm pretty new to everything that's going around i have to admit i do love anything that's fantasy themed so i love um fairies i love butterflies i love people who are like with unicorns things like that i love all of that that's one thing I'd always look to do. Um, I do have a couple of charts from Heaven Earth Designs that are full coverage and like that, um, which I can't wait to stitch once this lady is done. OK, 
Okay, where am I going to go? Sorry, just looking at my, my chart, which is on my iPads, which is just over to the left. Okay, um, so I really love fantasy. Um, I l read a lot of fantasy when I get a chance. Um, yeah, I can't really say what my favourite thing is to stitch because I'm still working that out. But I have recently gathered a major stash of Mirabilia and Nora Corbett patterns. Um, I just love the dresses. Sorry, this is not going through the fabric easily. Um, I have started stitching Roses of Provence. Um, kind of slowed down a bit slightly because I haven't stitched it recently. Mainly because of the project you are currently looking at. Now, Miss Elsa. Again, looking for the same. Right, we're actually going to carry this thread. I really don't care. Normally I'd cut it off, but because it's one of the main colours and it's so lighter than the others, we're just going to carry it. All right, where are we heading up to? Okay. Question three. What floss brand do you use? Um, well, currently Elsa, as you can see here, is stitched all in um, DMC floss. Other than the metallic, the metallic thread I've been using a petite treasure braid, which and I've been using the pearl, which is PB uh, number ten. It's really pretty. Um, it does give that shimmery shining, and it's mainly all around in the background. Um, I just recently had a whole video um, where I do have some more chronic and Karen water lilies, which is silk, which I've never stitched with before. So currently it's just mainly been DMC. I do now have the whole collection of DMC. Um, they sit in, on bobbins in my study in some, some, what do you call them? Storage containers. And when I need them for a project, I take them out. So yeah, I have stitched with um, other flosses before, like from kits and things but I find I do really prefer using DMC um it's way better than any other floss I've had so far but then I haven't had the experience of some other flosses either I can't wait to stitch with the water lily so with the silk um I think that's going to be really really pretty to stitch with and again metallic I've done one major, other than this one, Elsa, done one major piece of metallic that was on Tinkerbell and her shoes, and I absolutely hated it. So, but I think that was just a store brand metallic that was in the kit, and it was horrible. So, it really all depends, but currently at the moment, DMC is my go-to. Um, most of the time, if I'm buying DMC, I try and wait till it's really, really on sale, or I get it um, from one, two, three stitch. Because the price for DMC at Spotlight or Lincraft in Australia is a dollar twenty to a dollar thirty, which is like ouch. So I know there are some places around Australia that have it for like sixty at uh, seventy eighty cents, um, but trying to find them and trying to find something else to make postage worth it, it I just wait and see where it come. I do have quite a lot of um, second spares ready for Elsa for this project. So um, I, if I there is one that I don't have, I'll just go down Linecraft and I'll buy the one. Other than that, mo most of the time I have them already all kitted up um, and I don't need to buy a DMC very often. All right, question number four. What fabric is your fabric of choice? Um, so this is what I'm still working out. I really have loved working on 22 count hard danger or whatever, even wave, whatever it's called, um, for the heaven earth designs as this is what Elsa stitched on 22 count. Um, I do have, did buy some 25 count recently to stitch a stitch in time on because otherwise it wouldn't fit on my frame even when I've got the largest bars that you can get from this, the um, Omenic factory. Um, so I haven't tried that yet. I don't mind Ada. I mean, I will stitch on Ada if I need to. I am planning a project on it. Um, but my very first project on Even, or second project on Even Wave is Roses of Provence. And I am absolutely loving that. That is a lovely 
I'm loving the um, evenness of it. I'm loving how it looks like it's 3D. So I think that's starting to be my new favourite fabric. But I can't be too sure. Still really deciding. Um, I have joined Tammy's Fabric of the Month um, Club from Colour Cascades. My order there is 32 Count Lagana. And um, I haven't stitched any of it yet, but it looks really good. So um, once I get Elsa done, I'll probably put have way other more varieties um, for fabric and other patterns, which means I'll have a bit more time to decide what is my favourite. That didn't go through the right hole. Um, what is my favourite type of fabric and go from there. Um, in my stash, I do have a couple of off-cuts from the studio sessions from Tammy. Um, and there is some 16 count Ada, which I'm going to be using for a Peter Rabbit design for my cousin's little boy. Then I think I just got some more 22 count Ada in my stash. Not Ada, hard danger, what do you, whatever you call it. Um, there is one Heaven Earth design I'm actually started, which is the Once Upon a Time um, Quick Stitch by Amy Stewart. I've also started on 22 count Ada at Hardanger, but it seems like it's a different type. It's not as soft. Like this one here is really soft and really easy to move like the weave. The other one, it, I don't know what it is. Like I'll still stitch on it because I've already done like a page. I'm not going to start over, but um, it's like really, really stiff compared to the other, like and this type of um, fabric. All right, nearly at the end of this thread. Let me see. Go to the next page over. Alright. Here we go. That thread's done. Oh yes, you can see sometimes I don't actually turn my fabric over to um, change the thread. I can't be bothered. It'll get caught up. That's probably why my, my back is a real, real mess. Alright, question five. Do you use a needle threader or are you a floss licker? All right, you can see with this, it really depends on the thread. I'm a bit of both. I mean, I do have a needle threader here, which is the Quilters Threader, which I, by Collins, really love these. I was trying to get some more from 123 Stitch and they'd gone out of stock, so really annoyed at that. Um, but most of the time, if it's like a new thread or things like that, like I'm just getting out here, I will just be a floss licker and lick it. Um, but if my thread is really small or it just comes out the needle and I can't lick it easily, um, whoops, I will just use the needle threader. Um, I especially use the needle threader for metallic threads. So when I've been using the, um, the, P, the petite, petite treasure braid for Elsa, um, sorry, I have been using, um, the needle threader for that. However, it really depends on what the situation is. I've always been a needle uh, floss licker though, so I've only really had needle threaders the like last three, four years. All right, fine, where I was up to. Where do we go? Where do we stop? Um, I know you probably can see it and you do. There we go, so I've done that one. All right, we're up to here. Okay, question six. What kind of stitching frame do you use? All right, so currently at the moment, Elsa is on my 90 centimeter bars um, from Omnic Factory. So they're the quantum frame um, bars. The stretcher bars on the sides are 20 centimeters. I have been debating about going back on, oops, sorry, you got knocked by my glasses. I have debated about going back onto their site and ordering um, the 15 inch, 15 centimeter stretcher bars which have just been like released a couple of months ago because I do find the 20 centimeter quite large to work with in the end after a while um so yeah um but I'm really really happy with this frame I've done way more progress on Elsa ever since I have these bars um and she's been on them um I do have another set of bars in my study which are a 60 centimeter frame so but again most my because I'm so close to finishing Elsa most of my attention has been on her <coughs> sorry about that the other type of frame that I will use are Q snaps um I do have 
an 8 and an 11 Q-snap. So I actually mix them together and use 8 by 11 because I find that so much easier to use. Um, so currently I have Once Upon a Time and a Q-snap. I will have the Peter Rabbit design on your Q-snap Q -snap as well soon. Um, but I just rotate them around as I go through. So they're the two type of frames. I When I first started stitching, I used to try and use a... Uh, when I first started stitching, I tried to use a hoop. I could never get the tension right of the hoop. I don't know. I might have to try it again one time because I love to see everyone doing like lovely finishes in the hoops and I think that's so pretty. I'd love to find a way of like finishing some things like that. Not that I have a lot of things to finish, but for later on, it'd be a nice idea. But no, mainly these just stand here, so the quantum frame. Um, it's also connected to the um, monster I think it's called monster stand um, so that can have Q snaps it can have um, millennium frames it can have these frames um, it just depends on what side adjustment things clamps that's where the clamps that you use so yeah right, how many projects have you finished um, well there's a couple of big projects that I finished and I did show these in my very first floss tube video. Um, so I finished Aurora's Garden, which is by Bernadette Lusk, um, which is a Heaven Earth design. It used to be a freebie on um, their website. It currently is not anymore. It hasn't been a freebie for a while. I would show you the finish of that. However, I can't quite remember where I put it. Yikes. Um, the other one I have, another one I finished is Tink, uh, Pixie Perfect, which is Tinkerbell, which hangs in Chloe's, my niece's Chloe's room in her house. Um, that was probably my largest project before Elsa. Um, I haven't, okay, Aurora's Garden was my very first full coverage space, so very, uh, so like very stitched wide and this for that. Uh, Tinkerbell was my first big, like the biggest project. Like it was huge for me. Um, there was quite a few mistakes in there. Um, it took me three years on and off stitching it because I kept losing my stitchy bug. So it took me a while to finish. Um, da, 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 da. Then I've done a Peter Rabbit one for my cousin's daughter. A resi. Um, I also showed that in the video recently. Um, that one came with a hoop that it was framed in. As I said, I will be starting one for her younger brother, who is probably about one or two now. I just haven't found a pattern that we'd both like for him. Um, just moving my pattern. I've done Take Home Seashells by Dimensions, which is a small kit. I think I gave that to my aunt. I can't quite remember. Um, well, it's definitely not in the house, so I'm not sure where that's gone. I think I gave it to her, but she's done several moves house since then, so who knows where it is. But that was really pretty. I still had the pattern. I remember stitching that. Ah, oh, that's right. I remember stitching that when I was in year 11, so I was still at high school. Um, I was probably around about 16, turning 17. We went up to Alice Springs on a music trip, so in a bus. How many kids, both band and singers, in a bus up to Alice Springs and back. So that was fun. I remember stitching that. I did call Kangaroo and Koala bookmark, so that wasn't um, too hard. I did that, I think, my very first year of stitching. Um, did a baby sampler for, my, for Chloe, my niece, so that also hangs on a wall. At that time, I thought it was huge. Now it's kind of tiny looking back on it. But it just shows how we grow as stitches. I've also done um, many mini finishes, which I did show in that video. So what I can see here is I've had six big finishes. So like big projects and ten mini finishes. Um, yeah, so I've been stitching. I think I found out for ten years now. Um, because I just started when just before Chloe was born and she turns 10 at the end of next week which is freaky can't believe that so yeah I've been stitching for about 10 years all right how many completed works do you have displayed in your home okay so I actually have 
none of my work's displayed, okay? So there's no, all of my work has either been gone to other people or gone to Chloe. Um, but as I said earlier and showed in previous videos, we do have plenty of work stitched by Nana Sheila and Grandad. Um, we've got the 12 across alls, we've got a Christmas um, kittens, we've got the two music ones for the violin and then the other one, musical instruments. I've got the one in my fairy in my room. So there is quite a few stitched by other people in the house, not by me. All right, question nine. Question nine. Let me hang on, figure out where I'm stitching over here. All right, question nine is, do you do you more stitching for gifts or do you keep them for yourself? Well, at the moment, it seems like I'm doing more for gifts. Okay, like again, this one, Elsa, is yet again for my niece. After this, she can stitch her own. I have been teaching her to stitch. She can stitch her own. <laughs> so at the moment, it's been it's like more for gifts, but I have plans to do a lot more stitching for me once these projects are done. Um, the Heaven and Earth is for me, like the um, Once Upon a Time is for me. Roses will be for me as well. Um, Fantasy Castle for me. So coming up for more things for me, but it seems like there's been a lot more um, things for Chloe since then. All right. What is your favourite project or the one that or finish that you're most proud of? Um, so the one that I'm probably most proud of was start off with the very first one I did for Chloe, so the baby, the birth sample of the baby block. Um, again, I was in year 10, so I was turning 16, and it, I remember people saying, oh, why are you doing that, and things like that. That's such an old person's hobby. I'm like, well, I like doing it. Um, so that was my very, I think because it was my very first big project, my big finish, that's one I'm probably most proud of. Um, I did enjoy getting the Tinkerbell one finished. Um, however, it wasn't my most favourite. I think those priorities will change once the project in front of you is done. So this project here again is Elsa and I think once she is finished, she will be the project that I am most proud of. So it really, it, it drips and drabs, like it changes all the time. All right, what has been your least favourite or worst experience in stitching? Um, probably my worst experience in stitching was when I was doing the Tinker, Tinkerbell project. Um, I had no idea about using beeswax or thread heaven or thread magic to make your stitches lie a bit easier um, or to make the metallic deal, um, deal with a little bit better. So none of that I had any, any idea about. Um, so it was really a pain in my butt trying to stitch that metallic thread. I absolutely hated it. Oh, it was just horrible. The, I do have a runner up though. The, probably the next experience I had was actually when this project here also was about probably two, three years ago, two years ago now. Um, I was stitching on page five, so up the very top. And I looked through and I realised I had two symbols for two different colours and they were exactly the same symbol. And I'm like, ah, crap. Bugger. Damn, damn, damn. So I contacted Michelle and she saw, like, thankfully sent me the chart that had the symbol corrected. It meant that I had already stitched all of that symbol in that page and they were two completely different colors. Hang on, let's see if I can get the colors for you. One color was supposed to be 152, so what like this peachy thing. The other color was this bright green 966. So I had already gone through and stitched this symbol all in the 966. Then I realized, uh oh, okay, I got two symbols. This symbol was actually supposed to be the symbol number nine instead of the diamondy one that I had so I had to go back through page five frogged it all not, not just that that particular color and then restitched with this one so that would be the second worst um experience I have with stitching all right question 12 
what do you love and what do you hate about cross stitch okay what I love about cross stitch is how it's so relaxing I can just sit here with some music on watching a show watching floss tube which I'm still catching up on and just absolutely zone out it means I can just zone out be in my own little world um and it's kind of for me a form of meditation I just I'm so busy during the day um, teaching students, doing prep work, even if I just get 30 minutes at the end of the day just to sit down and just stitch, that is, I'm happy. I feel better. Um, I also like to leave my weekends as um, for stitching and we'll go from there. One thing I hate about stitching, um, let's think probably be the cost of getting the materials from us i mean i'm in australia so postage is a pain in the butt in the first place but it's also like the price of postage so i think that's the thing i hate is like um since the sport stores like spotlight and lincraft basically bought out most of the cross stitch stores here there's not a lot of variety now in them and if we look i'm looking to find like beads or some really nice patterns and things like that or silks um, I have to either shop online or go, like, even if it's a person in Australia or it's a person overseas. And if it's someone from overseas, again, the postage is just a killer. It's always a killer. That's the main thing. All right, I need to plop this and turn over the page. So bear with me. Chat among yourselves. As I tell my students some days, chat among yourselves as I just fiddle this bit out. Do, 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 do. All right. Question 13. Have you introduced anyone to cross stitch? All right. Funny thing is I have introduced two people to cross stitch. Okay. And they both have the same name, but they're two different people. First one is my niece, Chloe. Um, she has started a done one dragon fly kit, a little mini one from Semco, which she's completed. I think other than the bat stitch, but I can't remember if we've done that or not. But she's completed that and currently is stitching a little owl, which I don't have handy to me to grab to show you. Um, she's put it, picked it up and put it down. Um, she normally does it if she comes over. It was actually a couple of weeks ago where her um, Pam, her grandmother, um, Andrew's mum, gave her a cross stitch pattern and I think it's like a mill heel kit on plastic canvas um so she came over um on a Friday night and we had a stitching night um she actually got quite a lot of the white done on the owl so that was really good to see I'll see if I can insert a photo or something of what she's done so far get out the way um but yeah no she picks it up puts it down picks it up puts it down and from there the other person who I've introduced to cross stitch is my best friend, um, Chloe. So we've got little Chloe, who is my niece, regardless of how tall she is, because she's taller than I am. And we've also got my best friend, Chloe. Um, Chloe, we've been friends since um, even before primary school. We went to two different primary schools. We started being friends through Australian Girls Choir, so AGC. And then we realised we were both at the same high school. And that was that. We've just been friends ever since. I think it was about, oh, I don't know, four, three, four years ago that she asked to learn and we started doing cross stitch together. I think our very first pattern was a chart from Misty um, on Kingdom Hearts, which is a Disney PlayStation game, which we are both obsessed with. So um, I went over, I think I was stitching on, yeah, I was stitching on Tinkerbell at the time. So it would have been about four years ago. And sorry, yuck, getting tight here again. All right. Um, so we started with a cross stitch uh, little one there. She absolutely loved that. Then I think she went on Sprite Stitch, the board place where it has a lot of like gaming. Oh, I hate that. Don't you hate that when you get all the fuzzy stuff? Here we go. Let's try the other one. Here we go. Yikes. All right, fingers are getting sticky. 
Um, so she went and just right stitch under the board, found a free pattern. Where am I? There we are. And the pattern was a Chesh cat, so the Cheshire cat from an Alice Madness, Alice Returns Madness game or something like that. I'm not sure what game it was, but she's finished that and oh my god, she's just got framed and it's gorgeous. I know she's um, posted it in a couple of the groups and it is just absolutely gorgeous. Currently, she is stitching um, the Pokemon Generation number one, and it's huge. And I know she's stitching on 18 count, and it looks great. I think she's just over halfway. I know, and she's also done a couple of little kits. But you know, she and I um, occasionally will set up a sushi and stitching day. So we'll probably go out for lunch and have some sushi. And then we come back to either my place or her place, normally my place, chuck a movie on and or a, a TV series that we enjoy and then we just stitch together and chat. So relaxing. Okay, question 14. What was your first project and did you finish it? Okay, so I've divided this into two categories. I've divided as what is my very first cross stitch and what was my first project because I kind of classify them as different so my very first um, cross stitch was the rocking horse um, that was like a little semo semo kit very tiny um, but very pretty to stitch I think that took me like a week and a bit to stitch mainly because of school and stuff um, the very first one I say would be my project would be the birth sampler for Chloe um, and I did finish it and it's actually currently hang, uh, hanged, yeah, framed and hung in her room. So I was really, really pleased to get that done. Question 15 and it's the last question. How do you store your floss? Oh, hang on. Blah, blah, blah. How do you store your cross stitch floss? So as I probably said before, I store it in bobbins, um, store them on bobbins as you can probably see up here, they're stored in bobbins. Some of them I've hand wound onto them, some have also been wound with the mechanical thing, whatever it's called. Um, yikes. Do, 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 do. And yeah, and then, so what I've done here, let me just part this like that oops all right see this i can get this out everything falling over um i'll take a photo of what my the thing table next to me looks like but i have these boxes all right sorry about that you got bumped majorly and i didn't want to give you seek sickness so i've got these boxes so at the moment you can see i've got some standing up some um going down they're normally all lying down the ones that are standing up a lot ones that i'm very close to needing another skein of um, to wind on so that's just the way I know where I'm going um, the, so these are the way I store them I should I can fit most of them in here these are only the way I store them for when I'm working on them currently so I have my the, the full set in another container in my room um, which I'll insert a photo of because I have two containers because they don't fit into one <laughs> um, but when I'm working on a project or things like that just use the plastic bobbins and I've just written the number on them myself. Off the top here I've got my needles, I've got my metallic floss. Let's see if I can do this without you getting hit in the face again because we had a very wobbly instant then which I will edit out. So that's how I store my floss. Um, I'm still debating about how to store the Karen water lilies. I'm thinking maybe just some floss away bags. I might just use some glad bags myself which are like um, snack snap bags or something like that and creating my own floss away bags and doing it that way but yeah um that's how I store my floss so I don't have fancy things I just got top boxes and they're on bobbins 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 I was looking through my Instagram earlier today and I could, all I could see was when I'd originally done all my bobbinating I'm like oh wow right that was quick and and that's all the questions for so far. So let me just part my thread here. Mark off the question stitches I've just done. 
Um, on my iPad, I use Goodreader so that um, I can highlight, I can search, and I can mark it off. So when I my iPad broke earlier this year, it was like, oh no, my iPad broke. Um, and I originally basically went out and bought a new one. But I hope you enjoy watching me stitch this. As you can see, we've got some snowflakes coming up here. There's another snowflake here. This is part of a hair coming down. Um, and most of the rest of these colors here are like purples. So I'm just going through the boring, um, boring colors first and then I'll stitch the fun colors. I'd hope to try and finish this page because there's another four rows under here, which I need to move up for before we went away. However, because we're now going away tomorrow, that kind of put it, um, spanner into my, into my plans. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you don't and maybe want to see some more videos like this um just try it out see how we go i hope it wasn't too wobbly again i'm still getting used to the frame i had the frame for a year now but still getting used to the tension this is pretty good tension just everything else wobbles at the same time which i'm used to um i do have plans to do a couple of other tags eventually um so um look forward to those I might do another way if this goes down well i um, happy for you to ask me any, uh, ask any questions and I'll answer them if you're in my normal whip up, update or in a video like this. Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed it and listened to all my rambling. I do like to talk. I get told that a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I'm not sure when my next update video will be but I might do another tag video eventually before or maybe I'll do it later. I don't know. Either way, we're going away for a week as of tomorrow, so, and then school goes back. So we'll go from there. Anyway, have a lovely evening, day, afternoon, stitching, enjoy it. Um, let's hope the world decides to be a better place after the events that's happened in the last couple of days. My heart and prayers go out to everyone who's been involved or knows anyone um, what's happened over in Las Vegas. Um, we couldn't believe what was happening when we heard it on the news. So yeah, my heart and prayers go out to anyone who's involved in that. So yep, yeah, um, have you answered any questions? Hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, see you another time. Bye.